Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Garima Kapoor. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I am so grateful to have you here today. We're going to talk about a topic coming up a lot with business owners I'm talking to, and that is how to keep good talent in this really funky economic downturn we're going through right now, things are really hard, both for employees and employers, um, to not only find good talent, but to keep good talent. And you're going to be able to shed some light on that. But I'd love for you to just share with our audience a little bit about your background. First of all, hi, Christina. Thank you for having me here. Uh, yeah, and this is a topic that is very close to my heart. So looking forward to chatting more with you about this. Yeah. And uh, with respect to myself and my background, uh, I am originally from India, and uh, that's where my schooling uh, and my adult years have been there. And uh, by background, I have a PhD in finance and economics. And then I moved to Bay Area. And I moved in 2008, where, you know, it was the worst downturn, uh, you know, that uh, people of our generation had seen in a long time. And uh, it so happened that I could not find a job when I landed here. So it was like initial years were a little bit all over the place. And I tried mm -hmm. to figure out a place for myself. And, uh, you know, being in Bay Area, I think you cannot escape the excitement of startups overall and the energy uh, that is just because you're here, you get, uh, you know, pulled into that kind of an environment. And that's how I got into the startup world, just very naturally. Also, it helped that my husband was doing a startup at that time, uh, which is Cluster. And uh, I got to see it very close, up and close and personal, how startups are built from grounds up. And I became an investor in these startups. Uh, um, you know, I got connected to other founders, the companies that were interesting to me. I started investing them, learning more about technology because my background is not technology. It's finance and economics. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, filling that gap between how technology can change uh, in terms of and address the real problems. That was very important to me. So that's how I got connected with the up and coming technology space as an investor and then it, you know, it was just something because you watch all these things so close and you feel like, you know, it is time that I need to do something of for myself. And that's how Minaya was born and started. So I've been wanting to do startup since the longest time. And the things came together in 2014. And that's how Minaya was born. And I just put a put, you know, stick in the sand that this is it and I need to do this. Otherwise, I'll be very unhappy for the rest of my life. And there is yeah. no other way. So I just... Uh, I, yeah, that, that, that's the background of Manayo. Well, tell us a little bit about Manayo. Like, what does it do? How does it help businesses? Sure. So when I started, uh, uh, you know, the company, you know, in early stages, you're always thinking about what is the relevant problem that you want to go after. And uh, as a person, I always like to see things in long term. So it was very important for me to pick a problem that that last that outlasts me essentially and you know no matter where we look data was a problem that we felt like it's a problem that exists today and that is going to grow exponentially in next 10 or 20 years and that's a problem that we can just hack on for the rest of our lives so that was just very simple uh, way of looking at it mm -hmm. and when it comes to data you can address it from two ways one is the storage side and other is the compute side we thought that if you know we become the storage for the world's data then anything that we build on top of it will be additional value. So mm -hmm. our motto, motto has always been, you know, store and understand data. So what Minayo is essentially, it's a high performance cloud native object store. And uh, we compete against the likes of AWS S3 and we are open source first. It's a software defined product. So by ecosystem alone, we are much bigger than uh, AWS when it comes to deployments uh, mm -hmm. of Minayo. So that's what we do. It's a high performance data store. Wow. So tell me, in your journey, and not only as an investor, but now starting Manayo, how have you gone about with these really funky times we've had the past two, three yeah. years now, and kept good talent in your business and found them? Because uh, things have gotten a little weird, and they're going to probably get a little bit more weird before they get better. How have you done that in your company? Yeah. 
you know, as a transition from being an investor to an entrepreneur, I always tell everyone that it is much more easier to advise than to do things yourself. And that's what I realized uh, firsthand. As an investor, you know, looking from outside and view, I would have given a very different advice to people and startups. But now that I'm doing it myself, you know, the perspective changes when you are battling things day in well, and you know, out. I'm right? curious, what, what changed be- between your perspective looking in and then now being part yeah. of it? You know, as an when you are doing a startup, it's 10, 10 different things that you're managing and you're driving the company and you're very much involved in the nitty gritties of the business and you take the decisions based on, you know, your first hand view of things. As an investor, you know, you're meeting startups maybe once a quarter, maybe at maximum twice in one quarter, one quarter, and getting a snapshot bird's eye view of uh, what is going on in a business. So you give advice just based on that kind of information because you're not living through that journey, right? It's like a top eye view, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So as an entrepreneur, that perspective changes a little bit. And uh, yeah, but investors do bring a lot of value in terms of because they do, they see a lot of companies like us. So they can bring the wisdom in terms of, you know, what others are doing and what we should be thinking about. You know, mm-hmm. some of the things are very common across uh, startups, even though the industries might be different and so on. So those lessons, of course, they can bring. But uh, yes, the first first hand experience, you cannot uh, replace that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, yeah. Coming back to your question about you know retaining the talent and building uh, building the talent and whatnot. So, um, as a company, right? Every company has its own culture, has its own DNA, and the DNA comes from the leadership. It comes from the founding team, essentially. And the DNA of our team has been such that uh, we like doers in the company. And we were very clear that if we need to disrupt this space and disrupt this market where there are so many players already existing, we cannot afford to bring uh, traditional people into the business. For example, we don't hire from people in storage space. That is something we just don't do. We only hire people you know, who have primarily built applications or who have mm. had experience in the database world and so on. Because it's very important for us to, for uh, engineering that is coming in to bring fresh ideas, new mm-hmm. talent and creative ideas, because you cannot disrupt things by your old way of thinking. You need to think new and you need to think a new, you need to bring new ways of thinking in the company. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things that we have done in terms of getting the talent on board, how to identify the right kind of talent. So once we know, uh, yeah, you had a question? Yeah, I'm listening, thinking, yeah. well, when someone's sitting across from you interviewing and you're like, okay, we're a, a can-do environment. We want a culture of can-do people. Yes. Is there certain questions you ask to get that and, and kind of pull that out of people to see if they are that match? Yeah, a lot of the times, you know, I'll give you a very simple example. You can just ask a, a person, you know, what do they like to work on? And this is from engineering perspective. I'm making it super simple right now. But uh, if that person says that, oh, I only work on the back end of the system and I don't want to touch the front end of it, of uh, any product, that's a signal, you know, that this person doesn't want to work across the stack. And there might be issues going down when you, because in startup, you need full full stack people, people who are ready to do whatever is needed at that point. You don't want people who are just set in their ways of thinking, uh, right? So those kind of things you can filter out in just terms of, you know, what do you enjoy working on? What would you like to prefer uh, working on as you come on board? What kind of product excites you? All those things you can, there are certain nuances to that, but you can filter out uh, certain candidates who are a little bit stuck in their ways of thinking or who think that it is a badge of honor only to, you know, hack on back ends maybe and not on the front end of the uh, of the product which is a much harder problem I personally believe but yes so that that that's one way to filter it out that's a great idea and I, I'm thinking what's very important for business owners listening in is to first get clear what is the culture you want to have or that you that yeah. you find important the values the yes. mission and the vision uh, very clearly outlined for yourself and your and staff so yes. that going forward, you pick people that actually match. 100%. Where you, yeah. hundred, hundred percent. You know, um, recently someone recommended me to read this book, uh, Sapiens. It's a little bit older book. Uh, it's by, I think uh, you will know her. Uh, 
I, I hope I'm not butchering uh, this person's name, but uh, it's about evolution uh, and, you know, uh, existence of uh, human humanity and whatnot. And it was quite interesting that there is a reference to how a virtual entity like company is built, you know, in the sense, if you see company does not exist till, you know, you form and incorporate it. But once you incorporate a company, it's a living being of its own. And as you grow the company, it's an organism in itself in which, you know, there's a different culture. There is a way people think. There's a way people operate collectively. So, it, you know, it is quite interesting that even though it's a virtual entity, it is it is a living, breathing organism of its own, uh, you know, so you need to treat it as such. And uh, like I said, the initial culture always comes from the leadership and the founding team. And that is where you can lay down what values are important to you. Like, for example, for us, it's very important that we have a culture of doers. We don't like uh, people who just come at a very high level and want to build layers and layers of management. We don't like that, you know, for us, it's very hands-on. Secondly, it's important that we don't hire managers, rather we build leaders within the company. So, yeah, so that, yeah, that's very important for us because we want to groom people to take the leadership positions. And, you know, you will see that as you build the team, there are people who are naturally willing to do more. It is just part of themselves and you need to groom them and you need to make sure you give them the opportunities to step up and take a leadership role. So I think that is very important. So, yes. So, like I said, it's just... It is very, un companies are very unique in itself. And if you see Google or Apple or, you know, mm -hmm. certain startups, Uber, they have a very distinct culture of their own. And it all sets from the leadership. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And what I like that you mentioned there, and I, I hope more businesses take it to heed, is that take the resources and the wonderful talent you have already and let them know that yeah. they can grow and become more in your company. Cause I think most people want to feel they're making a difference in the work 100%. they do. It might not change the world, but if they can come in, yeah. I know I feel good when I've ended the day and I've done the best job I can. And I've, yes. I've grown a bit more and learned a bit more. And so if you can groom and, and, yeah. um, you know, and you know, enhance the skills and abilities of the staff you have that they can grow within your organization. They'll feel more excited to be part of that vision. They'll feel that they're part of the vision. Oh, 100 percent. And they carry the culture forward. Right. Mm -hmm. If I feel like the values that are important to me as a leader are being you know, represented by my team, eventually I want them to take the decisions what I would do in their place. You know, mm -hmm. essentially, that's how that's how you want the organization to be because mm -hmm. you cannot scale. One person cannot scale possibly as the business grows, right? You need a team of people and everything begins and ends with people, right? I mean, that's yeah. that that's how, uh, you know, companies are built and uh, they grow and whatnot. So it's very important that uh, you groom the people correctly and you also make sure it's very important that even there are bad actors, you want to make sure that you take action even quicker, on those bad actors because the impact on the culture with one wrong hire is I think it, it is felt for years and years and I have gone through that uh, personally so I know what kind of damage can happen if you just even hire one wrong person and as a founder as a business owner I think it's extremely important it's hard letting go is hard firing people is hard it's it's hard I mean you know when you bring someone in you are you're bringing them, you know, with all the enthusiasm and you want to make things happen, right? So mm -hmm. firing is hard, but I think it's very important that you take those decisions even quicker than you yeah, than you take hiring decisions because the impact, the damage can be long lasting. Yeah, yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, and I'm thinking as well, I've talked to a lot of businesses who are going through hardship. And when you go through hardship, some people on the team might not take it so well. And someone who is really a good fit for your culture to start with, as things get kind of harder, maybe you got to put on more hats in the team. Yeah, um, exactly. Some people will be a Debbie Downer and, <laughs> and not be maybe yeah. a good fit anymore. And then so then there's that hard, hard yeah. conversation. Uh, Sally's been with us. X amount of years, but now things aren't working out to have a conversation sooner than later. I I agree. And it's, you know, it's, 
really good to have people with different backgrounds and be a critique of each other because that's yeah. how you grow but there is a fine line that draws if someone is not aligned fundamentally in the way you see problems and you know uh, you see how things need to be solved that is where i think if there are really core fundamental uh, uh, differences you need to take uh, action sooner than later rest everything can be solved but if you don't see eye to eye on certain really fundamental basic things yeah. then you know it's a no go and tell us, uh, for your own business, has there been a good spot that you've found phenomenal workers or is it different yeah. all the time, depending on the position you're looking for? Yeah, you know, because I'm in Bay Area, when we started the company, I just wanted everyone to be in Bay Area, be around me, you know, and yeah. uh, let's do things together. But the reality is very, very different, right? And COVID was a great eye opener because I never believed in work from home environment. And for me, it was like, you know, even if people are, we hired some of the people in Europe and we were trying to relocate them to Bay Area and whatnot, you know, just because we thought that we can bring all the world's talent to one place. Mm -hmm. We were very naive and, you know, in our thinking in terms of worldview as well. And that's completely fine. You live and learn. So I think COVID was a great eye opener for us. And, uh, you know, talent is everywhere. It's insane mm -hmm. the quality of talent that you get uh, in Europe, in Africa, in, uh, you know, Asia. Amazing. There are amazing, amazing people. And also because we are open source first company, right? So we get to see people's interaction through our community interactions way before even we hire them. So we have a view that talent is everywhere. We'll go wherever talent is. And uh, and also in Bay Area, it's become a little bit uh, harder to even, you know, get the right attitude of people. You know, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, which is great. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it, it it is a little bit challenging to, uh, to get good attitude in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, humbleness and all those things that come right uh, when you're building a team. So... I've seen Europe is great place to uh, get a great place to have team Africa. Mexico has been really wonderful uh, uh, working out for us. And we just hired a kid in uh, Nigeria and I'm so excited about him and uh, great, great talent across the world. I think uh, we are at a stage with technology where borders should not control the talent as simple as that. So I think we are in a really great space. And uh, if someone is humble, willing to learn, I mean, mm -hmm reach out to us. We are, we are hiring. That's awesome. And what's great is this is uh, across the board. If you're an employee looking for a great okay. place to work, you yeah. can go around the world now it, it, that that's been yeah. opened up to everyone that your talent, but I love what you mentioned about how important it is to be humble um, because yes. everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. I don't, think yeah. people, <laughs> I don't think people understand what it means to start. Yeah. Career. So I, yeah. I like that you mentioned that because employee business owner, what, whatever you might be, whatever yeah. position you might be in, it always, it's always good to come from a place of service because ultimately yes. what we do when we go to work is we're serving either you're owning 100%. a business. It's really what it's all about. Hundred, hundred percent. I think if you're not humble, it also impacts your ability to learn new things. You know, it impacts a lot of different things. Humbleness is just one word, but it is also central point to how you grow as a person. So I think it's a very important characteristic for anyone that we hire also it reflects in your interaction with customers it interact it uh, reflects in your interactions with your own team mm -hmm. so i think that's just a key fundamental pillar point for us that um, ev everyone in the team needs to be humble and hungry to learn those are essential you know elements that we just don't compromise on that's awesome well you've given so much food for thought for our business owners, hopefully to take it forward and get that great talent out there. Also, anyone listening in who's an employee, you have the world open up <laughs> to you right now. Yes. Uh, so um, please let everyone know, I want them to find out where they can find out more about you, Manayo, how could they do that? Sure. We, you can find more, you can learn more about us, our product uh, through our website. It's uh, httpsmin.io. Uh, you know, very simple to remember. Min stands for minimalism. So min.io. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm there on LinkedIn, I'm there on Twitter, please reach out to me if you have any questions, uh, you know, happy to answer those and uh, be in touch. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for coming today, uh, Gamara, and sharing your great wisdom today. It's such a blessing. And uh, thank Likewise. you for coming to Savvy Broadcasting. Uh, Likewise, it was so wonderful to finally meet you and chat with you and look forward to many more conversations. You betcha. Have a great day.
Great. You as well. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.